to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's edition, we're not discussing welding, but we are discussing welding clamps. Now, of course, you can't have welding without welding clamps. Now, there are all kinds of welding clamps, and we're going to show you some of those today. Now, what I'm going to show you is a lot of the welding clamps that I use, and a lot of professionals use, just on a daily basis. There's a lot of specialized clamps out there. Um, I could go for two hours without showing you every clamp in this video today. So we're going to just cover the highlights and give you kind of a basic category of clamps here. And I want to start with the C clamps in particular. Uh, these are C type clamps and you can see that they have a Acme type thread down here that will screw in. Now this isn't a standard uh, screw type thread that you have on a bolt or something. It's actually got a different pitch and a different uh, depth and shape of the thread. It's designed for pressure type situations. Now, C-clamps range from very cheap to very expensive. What I have here is a very cheap brand clamp. It is actually a cast iron clamp. And there are two types of C-clamps in the industry. You're going to have a cast iron clamp like these two here. And you're going to have a cast steel clamp like I have here. Now the difference is that these under pressure on the cast iron ones can break with you. The disadvantage of a clamp like this is the fact that these are pretty slow. You've got to take quite some time to readjust these and keep turning them. You can turn these things for 10 minutes sometimes it seems like and still not have it adjusted all the way down to where you need it to be used. Now you can't keep going back and forth sometimes between different clamps. If you've got all your small clamps used up, well, you're going to have to use a bigger one to hold the same thing. So a long travel like this is kind of a disadvantage and it robs you of production. Now next we have what I call the sliding bar clamps. Now, they range in size, and you can actually see how fast these are to adjust here. Now, they work off a of kind of a cantilevered principle here, and the actual friction does the holding for you. Now, you can actually slide one of these up or down very quickly, and you can actually do it one-handed for most of them. So you can actually have a free hand holding whatever you're trying to clamp, and you can actually slide this up and down with your free hand to get it set and then you can turn it once you get close. Now you, obviously you don't have quite as long a turn here. Uh, you still have the Acme threads here and that's fine because if you're trying to get a little bit more pressure you can actually put some on it. Now this is a new acquisition I made. I'm going to test it out. This is actually designed to clamp and this can actually be taken off, this ring can be taken off, and this can be flipped around, and it can be used to sprit. Now this is an additional piece here that you can take off, which holds uh, pieces of pipe for you, and you can actually clamp a piece of pipe with this, and this will unscrew. So you have a regular clamp. Like I said, this can be used to clamp, or this one can be used to spread. And this is a good idea. Now this is a uh, particular brand is a strong hand, and they've got a nice line of tools. This is another bar clamp that I have. And I have a lot of this brand, it's called a Bessie, and that's just a name brand. I'm not endorsing it, because there's a lot of the good brands out there that make a bar clamp. Now these are typically made in Germany. Uh, they're really a good brand, got a good quality metal to them. I've never bent one. Even though they are this really hardened uh, type uh, tempered steel here, uh, it's never bent on me or broken. Now this is another Bessie tool that I've got here. And this is a clamp that I use. Now it's a combination of a locking plier and a sliding bar clamp. And the great thing about this is I can hold it with one hand. I can bring this up here and it will automatically adjust down for me by gravity and once it gets down I can clamp it tight. Now, this clamp is not cheap but it's not that expensive either. If you budget for it uh, this is a good tool to have in your arsenal of clamps because I've used this a lot of times where I couldn't use anything else. Now this is another clamp. This is actually more in line with what I would call a jig. 
Now this makes a perfect 90 degree angle. Now they've got new ones out that will actually give you a third dimension where you have a post coming up straight here, but this will hold uh, any kind of tubing, round or square, so that you can actually weld it down the center here. Now it's got some slots in the back here where you can mount it permanently or semi-permanently so that you can set up a whole jig system for building something up. Now even a little locking plier like this is sometimes helpful in welding. You just need a little tiny piece held, a very delicate part, and if you're TIG welding these really come in handy a lot of times. I've got two pair of locking pliers here that are actually uh, name brand pliers. They've been around in the shop a long time. I've had them for years and I've used them in all kinds of weather and activities. But uh, you actually have two type noses here. And this is actually more of a mechanics type nose here. I use it, but it's got this rounded feature here in the throat here so that it can grip something round. This is more for gripping sheet metal while you're welding or two pieces of plate metal. It's got the straight jaws here and it holds a little bit better. But I do use both types. Uh, if I find one on sale, I'll buy another set. So I don't really care what type of throat is here. If they're cheap enough, I'm going to buy it. Now this is your standard locking clamp. Now any welding shop you walk into, you're going to see these hanging everywhere. Um, this is just a standard tip here and you can actually buy them with the adjustable tip here like this so that they'll actually conform around the metal or the surface that you're working with. But uh, I wouldn't be without these and these will hold a lot of pressure. You can adjust the clamp down here to accommodate the size of metal that you have and when you clamp down on it you want it a little bit tight so when you lock it it will actually grip very tightly. Now you can get these clamps like this in a lot of different sizes. Now I've got this one uh, it's a little flimsy out here. This is not a really expensive clamp, but I bought it for one particular use at one time, and I've actually used it a lot more than I thought I ever would. It doesn't take um, long to get out of here, though. That's all clamps. And clamp one of the things you need to do is really make sure that you have it in your budget because you can go out and buy a handful of welding clamps and blow your entire profit on a job if you need to have some to complete a job. One of the things I recommend is go cheap first. Uh, cheap will get you by. Like I said, I've got this pair of pliers back here. I bought, they were seven bucks at the time I bought them. Now, you know what? I've made several hundred dollars with them probably just in the particular jobs that they've done for me. But the problem is, is that they don't work real well, but they've gotten me by. Now, I've got good name brand product in the rest of these clamps, except for my small cheap C clamps. And I'm going to tell you, uh, these right here, you can buy a whole handful for 25 bucks. And this is a good way to get started. No, they're not fast, they're not convenient, but you can have plenty of clamps uh, to hold what you need when you're welding. Starting off cheap is fine, but eventually you're going to want to get a better, more expensive clamp set. And I would recommend looking at and, and surveying the product reviews of these clamps before you buy them. And the other thing I would say to you is save the money, buy a good clamp when you can afford it, Use it as a little self-indulgence because it's going to come in handy and it's going to pay for itself. Sometimes it's going to pay for itself the first time you use it. Now I'm not going to pretend that this was an exhaustive lesson on welding clamps. Um, I wanted to give you a good idea of what's out there that's easily available to you without costing you an arm and a leg. Now welding clamps aren't something that we sell at Everlast. But it's something that a lot of our customers have questions about and call us from time to time asking us how to get started. Of course, in that same spirit, if you have any questions about welding, our products, or even welding clamps, give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video.